In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural quartz rock material in Blender. So after we create the procedural node setup, I will show you how to join the material together into this custom node group so that you can control the material. So let's just review the material. So we have the overall scale here to change the size of the texture. And then we also have some different colors here. So we have colors one and two. Then we have the cracks depth. So those cracks can be deeper or less deep. Then we also have some noise settings. So we have the noise scale. We also have the noise detail, and we also have the noise roughness, and then the noise distortion. And then we also have the roughness of the rock, and we also have the bump strength to add that surface bump, and then finally we have the displacement strength to pop out the mesh. And if you'd like to purchase this material, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. The links are in the description. And if you like using procedural materials in your projects, then definitely check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack which has all of my procedural materials pre-set up for Blender's asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. And to learn how to create all of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. All right, so I'll now show you the 3D setup if you wanna set up the 3D viewport the same way that I have. So I press shift A, I went here to mesh, and I added an icosphere. And then right behind me, if you click on that little add icosphere settings, I'm going to turn the subdivisions up to six because I want lots of even geometry so that the displacements have geometry to actually pop the mesh out. And then I will close the add icosphere settings and let's use the object context menu to shade the object smooth. Now this object is quite large and when modeling to the real life scale in Blender, the default primitive objects are a little bit higher than an average human, so this is quite large. So let's make this smaller to a better size for a rock. So I will scale this down and let's just type in 0.18 and then hit enter. So that is a much better size. And then I will press control A and just apply the object scale. So I now want to add a couple other smaller rocks. So I'll press shift A, I'll go to mesh and I'll add another icosphere. But then if you click right behind me on the little add icosphere settings, this one I'm just going to turn the subdivisions to two because this is quite smaller so we don't need as much geometry. And then I can close the add icosphere settings. Now this one I want to make much smaller, so I will scale it down and I'll type 0.07 and then enter so it's much smaller. And then I will kind of move it over here behind the larger one. And then I'll select this object, press Control A, and I will apply the scale. And then using the object context menu, I'll shade the object smooth. And then I want to make one more, so I'll duplicate this. And I'll scale it down a bit more, and then you can just press Control A and again apply the scale, maybe make that a little bit bigger. Now I want to give these objects even more geometry so that the displacement looks more detailed. So if I select this object here, I'll press Control 1, and that is going to add a subdivision surface with one level. So you can see right over here, if you go to the modifier properties, you can see the levels viewport is 1, and I want the render to be 1 as well. Then I will select this object here, and I'll press Control 3, and this will add another subsurf but it's gonna change the viewport levels to three and I'll turn that up as well so it's both three and then the same thing here click on this object control three and set the render and viewport to three so these objects now have lots of geometry so I'm now going to select all of the objects and I'll hit the tab key to go into edit mode and then what I'm gonna do is hit the O key and that is gonna turn on this proportional editing here so I now want to change the shape of the rock so I will select a vertex down here and hit G to grab and I can move this up kind of just stretch that up there And if it's acting kind of laggy in the viewport then here on the levels viewport We can just turn this to zero so that you can't see the subsurf So now I can just select some vertices and bring this up and you can scroll with your mouse wheel It'll change the size of the proportional editing and I'll make the bottom of the rock kind of flat And then I'll also select the side here and kind of pull that out and just make the rock kind of a random shape and then I'll do the same thing for these objects. So I'll select these objects here, maybe flatten the bottom, and then kind of pull some of the vertices around, something like that. And also right here, just kind of pull that around, stretch it out, so they kind of look like rocks. Then I also pressed shift A and I went down here to camera and just added a camera and I just placed the camera pointing at the objects. And if you select the camera and then click over here on the object data properties, the camera settings, I turned the focal length up to 80 just because it kind of zooms in the camera and makes things look a bit more flat. Now as for the lighting, I added in these three area lights here. So if you press shift A, you can go down here to light and you can add the area light. So I added these three area lights and I have two here on the back to kind of give a rim light and then this one here on the top. 
And this light over here, I turned it to a power of 65. This light here, I turned it to a power of 50. And then the one up here, I turned this to a power of 30. Now also to give some nice realistic lighting and reflections to the objects, I went here to the world properties and I added this bathroom 1K HDRI. So this is a free HDRI from polyhaven.com. Link will be in the description if you'd like to download it. And again, I downloaded the 1K HDR version on Polyhaven. So once you download the HDRI, you can add a new world. And here on color, you can click on on the yellow dot and choose environment texture and then you can click on the open button and open up the HDRI. So now what I'll do is hold down the Z button and move my mouse up into the rendered view. Now you can see I have the background transparent and that is because I went here to the render properties and I opened up the film tab and then I check marked the transparent button. So that way the HDRI will still light the scene but you can't see it in the background. So you can do that if you want to. And then also right here on the color management, I changed the view transform to filmic and the look to high contrast to make the colors look nicer. So I'm in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm in the rendered mode and then I have the shader editor right here. So let's click on one of these objects and we will click on new to add a new material to the object. And I will rename this material to quartz rock. And then I'm going to click and drag and I'm gonna drop the material from this material slot here and I'm gonna drop it onto the other objects so that they all have the same material. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes. So to enable the Node Wrangler, you can click on edit and you can go to the preferences. And then over there on the add-ons tab, just search for Node Wrangler and you can check mark the Node Wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. So now let's create the material. So I'm gonna press Shift A and I'll go here to the search and I'm gonna start by searching for a brick texture. Let's drop the brick texture down here and I'm gonna be using it to make the displacement. And then also with the brick texture selected, I'll press Control T to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And let's use the object coordinates because the object coordinates will place the texture on the object more evenly. And then because we turned on the node wrangler, I can Control Shift and select the brick texture and that is gonna preview it on the objects. So we can now change the settings of the brick texture. So here on color one, I'm gonna click and drag color one, and I'm gonna drop the color onto color two so that they both have the same color. And then here on the scale, I wanna change this to like a 1.2 so that it is smaller. And then here on the mortar size, I wanna make this smaller, so I'll turn it to like a 0.075. And then I want to make the mortar very smooth, so I'll turn that all the way up to 1, so you can see it is now smooth on the edges. And I'll leave the other settings how they are. Now I want to add another texture to distort the brick texture, because right now it's really straight. So I'll press Shift A, and I'll go to the search, and I'll search for a noise texture, and let's drop the noise texture in between the mapping and the brick texture. So because the noise texture is going through the mapping, it's going through the vector here, it's distorting the placement of the Voronoi texture. So let's now change some of the settings. So I'll turn the scale of the noise to like a 2. Let's also turn the detail to the max of 15. And then here on the roughness, I'll turn this up a little bit to like a 0.55. And then also the distortion, I'm going to turn this up to like a 0.2. So now you can see it is distorting that brick texture. However, it's distorting it way too much, and so I want the noise texture to have less of an effect over the Voronoi. So I'll press Shift A, and I'll go to the search. And I'm going to search for the Mix Color node, and let's drop the Mix Color in between the Noise Texture and the Brick Texture. So now what we can do is we can take the original mapping, which isn't distorted at all, and we can mix it in with the mix. And so we're gonna mix between the mapping and the noise. So let's take the color here from the noise texture and I'll put that into color B. And then this mapping vector, which isn't distorted at all, we can put that into color A. So now we're mixing between the mapping and the noise. And so now if you drag the factor around, you can see it's blending between only using the mapping or only using the noise. Now you can see the texture is moving around a lot when I move the factor. So to fix that, I am going to click on the mix here and I'm gonna change this to the linear light instead. So now when I drag the factor, it's distorting the texture, but it's not moving it around. So I'm gonna turn the factor to a 0.35 just so that it's not quite as distorted. And so this is what we're gonna be using in the displacement to make the darker parts going into the mesh. Now, as well as that, I do just wanna mix in some more noise to the texture. So I'm gonna click on this linear light here and I'll press Shift D to duplicate. Let's drop it here. And then I wanna take this brick texture and let's put the color into color B. And I can control Shift and select this mixed color. Now I wanna mix this in with the noise texture. So I wanna mix the noise texture into the brick. 
So I'll take the factor here, and I'm going to put that into color A. And then I just want to add the dark values of this noise texture. We're basically just going to add it on top. So let's click on the linear light here, and I can change it to darken instead. So if I now turn up the factor, you can see it's going to add the dark values. So I'm going to turn the factor just to like a 0.1. So that is very subtle, but that'll be better for the displacement. So let's add the displacement so we can see what it's doing. So I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search and I'll add the displacement. So we're going to add the displacement node, drop it here. And I want the displacement to be going here into the displacement of the material output. And then we want to take the darken result and we want to put that into the height value of the displacement. And that way it'll actually convert it to displacement data. Now you can see nothing is happening. The mesh isn't popping out. And that is because we need to go over here to the material properties. And we need to go down here and open up the settings. And we want to go to down here to the surface and we want to change the displacement to displacement and bump. And this is telling the material to use the displacement. So now this displacement node is converting the darken into displacement data. And we now have the scale value and the scale value is gonna change how strong it is. So let's turn the scale down because it is way too strong right now. So I'm gonna turn the scale down to like a 0.2. So now if you kind of look here in the areas where those cracks are, it's going back in. So just to show you, if I turn the factor all the way up to one, if I turn the factor up to one, it's adding all those dark values. And so you can see where those darker parts are from the brick texture that is going way down into the mesh. And then the lighter parts are popping back out, but that is way too strong. So then we can drag this factor around to make it more subtle. So I find that a factor of 0.1 works pretty good. And then also this factor here, that is controlling how much it's distorted. So you can see it's way distorted or very little distorted. So I'm just going to leave it there how it is. So then let's control shift and select the principled shader. So that's actually using the principled as the shader. And now you can see we have lots of detail. You can see there's those little cracks or crevices there. And that is the brick texture. So I want to keep my nodes nicely organized. So what I'm going to do is click and drag to box select all of these nodes here. These are all of the displacement nodes. And I'll press control J to join them all together into a frame. And with the frame selected, I can press F2 to add a label and I can just call this displacement and then I want to click and drag to box select these two nodes here and I will press Control J to join them both together into a frame as well and I'll click on the frame and press F2 to add a label and I'll call this mapping all right so I now want to create another texture up here which is going to go into the base color so I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search and I'm going to search for a noise texture and let's control shift and select the noise texture to preview it so I want to take the mapping let's take the vector and Put that into the vector of the noise texture so that it's using the object coordinates and then let's change some of the settings so i'll turn the scale to eight and i'll turn the detail up to the max of 15 and let's add a bit more roughness so i'll turn this up to like 8.6 and i want to add a bit more distortion just a little bit so i'll turn it to a 2.8. So now you can see there's a little bit of distortion kind of around that noise texture. Now I want to make this more interesting, so I want to distort it with another texture, kind of like how we did down here. So I'll press Shift A and I'll go to the search. And I'm going to search for a Voronoi texture. And let's drop the Voronoi texture between the mapping and the noise. And so because it's going through the vector, it's going to distort the placement of the noise texture. And we actually want to use the distance value instead. So let's put the distance into the vector. Now I want to make this much less strong because the Voronoi texture is distorting it way too much. So I'll press Shift A and I'll go to the search. And I'll search for another mix color. And let's drop the mix color in between the Voronoi texture and the noise texture. So I want to use this mix here to mix between the Voronoi, which is distorting it, and the mapping, which isn't distorting it at all. So I'm going to take the vector here, and let's put that into color A, and then this Voronoi distance, let's put that into color B. So if I now drag the factor around, you can see it's going to distort it more or less. And just like we did down here with this other setup, I want to change the mix here. I want to change it the type to linear light, and that way when I drag it around, it's not moving the texture around quite as much. Now I want to make this very, very subtle. So I'm going to turn the factor to a 0 0.065. So that way it is distorting it, but just by a very small amount. So before I plug this into the base color, I do want to change the colors a bit. So I'll press shift A, then I'll go to the search. And I'm going to search for a color ramp because I want to make it more contrasty. So let's drop the color ramp after the noise texture because I basically just want to make the black colors darker. So let's click on the black tab here. And if I drag the black tab towards the white tab, it's going to make it more contrasty. So I'm just going to drag it to about there so that it's a bit darker. And I can drag the principal shader back, just move it out of the way for now. So we now have the black color and the white color, but I want to 
change those colors and make it more look like that quartz rock. So I'll press Shift A and I'll go to the search and I'm gonna search for a, another mix color node. And let's put the mix color node here after the color ramp. And why I'm using this mix color instead of the color ramp is because I wanna be able to control the colors outside of the custom node group. And so we can use this mix to do that. So let's take the color here and I can put that into the factor. So the factor value determines what parts are gonna be color A and what parts are gonna be color B. So that's gonna be the black here and the white here. So we can now make the two colors for color A and B. So here on color B, I just want to make this fully white. And then here on color A, I want to make this a light color and I want to make it a very slight tannish color. And if you want to use the exact same color that I'm using here on color A, then you can go to the hex value and I'm going to be using a hex value of BC A9 nine seven so you can punch that in if you want to use the exact same color that i'm using so we now have a nice color there for the quartz rock so we can now take the mix result and let's put that into the base color of the principal shader and i can control shift and select the principal shader to preview it and let's drag the principal shader up here and then again to keep my nodes nicely organized i want to click and drag to box select all these nodes here and i will press ctrl j to join them together into a frame and if you want to you can kind of compress them down make it look nice and neat and then if you select the frame you can press f2 to add a label and i'm just going to rename this to color all right so i now want to make the rock more shiny so let's go here to the roughness and i'm going to turn the roughness way down to a 0.05 so that the rock is nice and shiny now you can see that the rock still isn't see-through you can't really see through the rock but we are going to add that later but the next thing that i want to do is add a little bit more surface bump so i'll press shift a and i'll go to the search and i'm going to search for another noise texture let's drop the noise texture here and then again i want to use the object coordinates so let's plug the vector here into the vector of the noise texture and then I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it and let's change some of the settings So I want to turn the scale to like a 7.3 and again, let's make it very detailed So I'll turn the detail to the very max of 15 and I'll turn the roughness up to a 0.55 I like that value and the distortion heel. I'll turn that up to a small number like a 0.2 so now we can use this noise texture here and we can put that into the normal to give it some more surface bump So let's put the factor into the normal and then I can control shift and select the principal shader Now you can see something is wrong with the texture It's really dark and that is because we need to convert the black and white data here from the noise texture into normal data that the shader can use so I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search and I'll search for the bump node and let's put the bump node in between the noise texture and the normal. And then we actually want to put the noise texture factor into the height value so it converts it to normal data. So you can see now it is adding all that surface bump. Now that is a bit too bumpy so I'm going to turn the strength here to just like a 0.3 on the bump. So now it just adds a bit more surface detail to that rock. And I will click and drag, bring this over here, and I'm going to click and drag to select both of these nodes. And I'll press Ctrl J to join it together into a frame. And with the frame selected, I'll press F2, and I can just call this Bump. All right, so this is really starting to look like a quartz rock, but it still isn't see-through. So I'm going to be adding another shader, and that shader is going to be see-through. So let's click on the principal shader. I'll press Shift D to duplicate it, and let's drop it up here. And I can Control Shift and select the principal shader to preview it. And then also, I want the same bump normal to be going into the normal of this principal shader as well. So now to make this look like a quartz rock so that you can see through it, I want to turn up the transmission value. So this transmission, I'm going to turn it up to like a 0.8. And now it looks much more like glass. So you can actually see through the quartz rock. But I don't want it to be fully see-through. I don't want to be able to see through the entire thing. I want some parts to be a bit less see-through and then other parts to be more see-through with this transmission. So we are going to mix these two principled shaders together. So I'll press Shift A and I'll go to the search and I'll search for the mix shader and let's drop the mix shader here in this wire and I want to plug this principal shader up to the bottom one and then this principal shader will plug that to the top one. So now if I drag the factor value that's blending between the two shaders. I want to create another texture so that some parts are more see-through and some parts are less see-through. So to do that, I'll press Shift A and I'll go to the search and I'm going to search for another noise texture. Let's drop the noise texture here. And again, I'm going to use the object coordinates. So let's take the mapping vector and I can put that into the vector of the noise texture. And then let's control Shift and select it to preview it. So I want to turn the scale to like an eight. And look, again, let's turn the detail all the way to the max of 15 and I'll leave the other settings how they are. 
So now I want to make this much more contrasty because right now, if I put the factor into the factor here of the mix shader and control shift and select the mix shader to preview it, it is working a little bit, but I want it to be more clear where it's visible and where it's not visible. So I'll press shift A and I'll go to the search and I'm going to search for a, another color ramp and let's drop the color ramp right here after the noise texture. So I can now take the black tab and I can drag it over and I can take the white tab and drag that over. So if I drag them really, really close to each other, it's going to be very easy to see the difference. So there you can see through the rock, but then here you can't, but that is a bit too strong and I want to make it more subtle. So I'll drag the white tab to about here and then this black tab I'll drag kind of back to about there. So if I control shift and select it, you can see what it's doing. So I'll now control shift and select the mix shader to preview it. And I might even drag the white tab back a little bit more. So now you can see some parts of the quartz rock you can see through it and then other parts you can't. And that is it. So that is the finished procedural material. So I'll now show you how to join this together into a custom node group. So I'm going to click and drag to box select all the nodes except the material output and I'll press control G. Control G will join it together into a node group. Now, if you press the N key to open up the side panel, we have inputs and outputs. And so we can customize the inputs and outputs to make the customizable node group. So let's click on the shader here and I want the shader to be on top. So click on the shader and then you can click on this arrow here to bring it up. So then you can come over here and find the group input node and I'll drag the group input down here and we can plug any values up into the group input. And then if we hit the tab key to go outside of the node group, we'll be able to control those values outside of the node group. Let's grab the node group and bring it over here and I can click here and drag it out to make it a bit bigger. And then I want to make the name of the node group the same name as the quartz rock. So I'll click here and I'll copy the name with control C and then click here and press control V to paste the quartz rock. So now we have this custom node group. So let's hit the tab key to go back into the node group. And then here on the group input, we want to plug up all the custom values. So I first want to control the overall scale of the entire material. And this mapping node is plugged up to all the textures. So it'll control all of the textures scale. So let's put the scale into the group input there. And then if I click on the scale here on the inputs, I want it to just be one single value, not three. So if I click on the type here, I want to change it to float instead. So it is one single value. Now here on the default value, I just want this to be one. And then if we hit the tab key to go outside of the node group, I want to turn the scale back to one. So now that's controlling the scale of the material. So let's hit the tab key to go back into the node group. Now I also want to be able to control the colors. So let's click on the group input and we can drag it way up here. And then we can take the color here, color A, we'll put that into the extra socket and color B, put that into the extra socket of the group input. And then we can double click on this to rename this and I'll rename this one to color one and then B here, double click on this and I'll rename this to color two. Now, if the group input accidentally gets put in the frame here, you can press Alt P and Alt P will take it out of the frame. So I now want to be able to control the cracks depth. So if I drag the group input right down here, if I go over here to this darken, if I drag the darken, you can see that's going to control the depth of those cracks. So let's put the factor into the extra socket here. And then if I double click on this to rename it, I'll rename this one to cracks depth. And then I want to control a bunch of the noise settings. So let's drag the group input over here. And we have this noise texture here and I want to be able to control these values. So let's put the scale into the extra socket and we'll do the same for the detail and also the roughness and also the distortion. And then here on the names, I want to click here and I want to type in noise. So I'm going to rename this one to noise scale. And then this one here, noise detail, noise roughness, and noise distortion. So now if we go outside of the node group, you can see we have all of those different sliders to control the noise. So let's go back into the node group. Now I also want to be able to control the roughness of the material. So let's drag this right over here. And if I go right up here to the roughness values, the roughness values are exactly the same on both of these shaders. So I'm going to take the roughness here. Let's drag that into the extra socket here. And then I'll take this roughness value here and I'm going to drag that into the same socket. And because they're going into the same socket, this single roughness value is going to control both roughness of both of the shaders. And then I also want to be able to control the bump strength. So let's take the strength here. I can put that into the extra socket. And if I double click on this, I'll rename it to bump strength. And then the last value that I want to control is the displacement strength. So here in the displacement, we can take the scale. Let's put that into the extra socket here. And then if I double click on this to rename it, 
I'll rename it to displacement strength. All right, so I can drag the group input right over here. I'll just stick it down here underneath the mapping and you can hit the tab key to go out of the node group and you can press the N key to close the side panel. And here is the finished procedural quartz rock material. So we can now just review the material. So we have the overall scale and we also have the different colors. So we have color one here and then we also have color two. Then we have the cracks depth. So you can turn that down if you wanna make those cracks have more depth. We also have a bunch of settings here for the noise so we the noise scale and also the noise detail and the noise roughness if you want to make it much more detailed and also that noise distortion and then we have the roughness of the material but i want to keep it very far down so that it's very shiny and then we have the bump strength and that is the surface bump and then finally we have the displacement strength so that's going to be it for this tutorial so i hope you enjoyed the tutorial i hope you found it helpful and thank you for watching and if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase this material you can get that on my gumroad store and my patreon page the links are in the description and if you'd like to purchase more procedural materials then definitely check out my ultimate blender procedural material pack and to learn how to create any of my procedural materials you can check out my blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on youtube all the links are in the description so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you for watching.